Hey, welcome back. If you look at the board behind me, I'll go through quickly what we're doing in week 35 right here. Um, also, since we're wrapping up the trimester, a little bit of uh, housekeeping. One of the things the students have asked about is extra credit, but remember, all of the tests for the third trimester are open to take. If you retake one of your previous third trimester tests, just make sure you email me. The computer doesn't let me know if you retook one. Remember, your grade can only go up if you take those online tests. Uh, for example, if you retry one, and you get a slightly lower score than you did the first time around, don't worry about it. Uh, we don't put in the lower score, we only put in the highest score, which is a good thing. So uh, give those a shot if you wanna bump up those grades for the end of the third trimester here. And let's jump on into what we did today and this week. First of all, CNN 10, our current events today. This is one of the few days of the whole year, I think maybe three or four times over the course of the whole year, where we used all of CNN 10, you know, the 10 minute news brief. We usually like pull one story out of it when we do use it. Why all three things? One, they talked about um, uh, supermoon and the eclipse, and we've already talked about eclipses before, which is why it's not up on the board. But that was a really good one. Remember, we have solar and lunar eclipses. Also, they talk a little bit about conspiracy theories r surrounding the coronavirus. Uh, remember, this is why we have science as one of our core classes. Conspiracy theories are easy to come up with and hard to prove. And in this case right here, they're doing an investigation on the origins of the coronavirus. But uh, most scientists agree that it jumps species because that's what viruses do. And again, when they're looking at things that are conspiracy theories, you know, Bigfoot walking through the northern forest or the Loch Ness Monster swimming around in Scotland, it's easy to come up with that stuff, but really difficult to prove. So remember to always look at everything, especially things in media, with a critical scientific eye. That what is what I hope I've tried to pass along to you over the course of these uh, three trimesters that we've had together. And then finally, they do a really excellent story on uh, gorillas in the mist, he, he calls it. He uses that term because, of course, that was the Diane Fossey book, and she studied the gorillas that have really been right on the brink of extinction for a generation now. Uh, their numbers were down to as few as 200. Remember the big reasons for extinction are habitat destruction, invasive species, and gorillas have the extra problem too of actually being poached and hunted. It's really heartbreaking. And it's one of those things that you see profiled today because they're profiling the people that are trying to rescue these mountain gorillas. Really an important bit of effort there. Um, we're experiencing a mass extinction on this planet right now, mainly caused by habitat destruction, mostly caused by what people are doing. And this story really profiles a species that shares 98% of our DNA, so that's one you really wanna check out. From there, we went back into what we're really focusing on as we kind of wrap up what we're doing, waves. We were trying to use the islands of Hawaii as a good jumping off point to kind of wrap everything together. On the next screen, you'll see where we talk about waves in Hawaii a little bit. We watched a brain pop on waves and the way we categorize them. There's mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves, things like earthquake waves, things that move through a medium. Electromagnetic waves, light. Those who are here in class A, we took these, just little spectrographs. We went outside and we were looking at something that turns the light that we see outside into a rainbow. Remember, all of the information that we get from deep in the universe comes to us through electromagnetic waves. It's a stunningly, amazingly cool quirk of nature that we get to look at something that is you know, within our solar system or halfway across the universe. And we can tell the elements that are there because we can interpret the light waves that are coming in. We can actually see that different elements make a signature pattern in the light, those absorption lines that we learned about a long time ago. And those signature absorption lines tell us what elements are there. I personally find it absolutely amazing that you can look at a galaxy and you can say, hey, these are the elements that we see there. These are the same elements we see here in our own galaxy and right here on our planet. That is an amazingly cool little quirk of nature. Back here, back here on Earth, we've got the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, this was a bit of a review. You notice I did not put yellow in there. Why? I couldn't find yellow on uh, the whiteboard marker uh, list, but if you check out the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, keep in mind that the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see is only a small part of the entire spectrum that's out there. From gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet, the most energetic of rays, each of these up here, dangerous to people in terms of our DNA, to 
the microwaves, radio waves, and infrared waves on this side right here. Infrared liter literally means below red. Radio, of course, you know, where you can listen to KNBR 68 in the giant station. Microwaves, of course. We had a microwave tower out here that fell, actually, during the uh, latest windstorm. Those microwave towers for cell phone communications and things like that. Uh, so a quick review, because remember, rainbow was one of our uh, key terms. Oh, and Roy G. Biv, that was that famous uh, way of remembering red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, violet. If you look at the way that rainbows always have the same pattern. Moving on from there, we went to this screen and we talked a little bit about waves in terms of Hawaii. Um, waves, light, if you're on a beach in Hawaii and you're watching the waves come in, water waves are one of the waves that occur at kind of a human speed. We can play with these waves. We can surf on these waves, which is, take it from me, very, very fun. If you look at this equation right here, relates to something Dr. Guccione talked about too, we can interpret waves always, light waves, water waves, electromagnetic waves, with this equation, velocity equals, and if that looks goofy right there, that's, that is a, a symbol called a lambda, a Greek letter lambda. Velocity equals wavelength multiplied by frequency. If you're looking at this formula right here, you can interpret the waves by checking out these three quantities. When you're looking at, for example, waves in the ocean, from the tip of one wave to the tip of another wave is what we call the wavelength. The frequency is how many waves pass a given point in a second. It's measured in hertz, cycles per second. And one of the things on the last screen asked students, and I'm asking you right now, to think of at least five examples of waves in nature, periodic motion in nature. We use these all the time when we're trying to study and learn about everything from ocean waves to say earthquakes. Earthquakes was another thing that related to Hawaii. Uh, both Hawaii and here in California, we have earthquakes all the time. Hawaii, of course, has earthquakes, small ones usually, that are uh, caused by volcanic action, by magma moving, by underground water moving as well. Here in California, we've already seen it before on our screen several times where we see, and you can type it in for yourself if, you have a, if you're on a computer right now, obviously you are. Go recent earthquakes in California and Nevada, do a little Google search on that. Every little dot you see in that screen is an earthquake that happened either today, yesterday, or within the last week. They have them in three different colors. They're put up there by the U.S. Geological Survey. And you see that on any given week in California, there are hundreds of measurable earthquakes, several of them usually right around here in Pacifica, right along the San Andreas Fault. So that's one of the things we've also talked about. Waves help us. And by the way, the answer to one of our questions is down here, we say, hey, why do we study earthquake waves in the first place? Obviously, it's interesting to study earthquake waves in terms of the damage that they can do. But one of the other things that we can do with earthquake waves is when you shake something. It's like when someone gives you a present and you shake it and say, hey, what's inside? It's a little bit like earthquakes naturally shake the earth for us. And when you measure the speed of the waves through the rock, you can tell what's inside there. So by doing lots of measurements of earthquakes from different locations on the planet, you can tell exactly what is in between you and where the, 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 sort, the place where you're reading the waves and where the earthquake began. You can tell the type and the density of the rock between those two places. It's a really useful tool. So when you see those science cutaways where it shows a slice of the earth and it shows the layers of things, you should be thinking critically like a scientist going back to the very beginning. Hey, wait a second, how do they know that? Well, we know that from studying waves when, from interpreting earthquake waves. Finally down here, when you look up uh, earthquake waves, and you're checking right here in San Francisco or you're looking at the place that we saw over in Hawaii, I'd like you to also note when you look up recent earthquakes in California and Nevada, how they all seem to fall around what we saw last week, the Ring of Fire. Not just a great Johnny Cash song, but the Ring of Fire, of course, is a place where 80 to 90% of earthquakes and volcanoes occur around the world, uh, mainly around the Pacific Ocean. So that's where I'm leaving it today. Quick recap, we did a little bit on the current events, we did a little bit on waves, and here in class, the students that were here, we went outside and we used our spectrographs to look at a rainbow. Obviously, if you weren't here in class today, look up a rainbow for yourself. Check out the Roy G. Biv, the way of remembering the order of the colors in a rainbow. And I'll see you next time when we're back for week 36, which will be the last week 
of uh, tests. As a matter of fact, the last test that we have going in the third trimester is our week 36 test. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you online. Bye-bye.